All right, thanks very much. I used to be, be a musician, so I'm very happy with a big stage and a big crowd. Thanks very much for inviting me. Uh, I live in Switzerland. Uh, I run a company called The Futures Agency. And what we do is we create ideas for clients that want to be prepared for the future, which you can imagine is kind of a hard uh, thing to do. Being a futurist is a little bit like catching the impossible. And by the way, if you're on Twitter, you can waste some time and tweet me if you want later, and we can connect there as well. So let me dive right in. I think social media can be very confusing. Uh, here's a bit of a joke to get things started, right? On the left side, Twitter makes me like people I've never met, and Facebook makes me hate people I know. Right? I think a lot of people are confused what, with what social media actually is. And I can say for myself, I was confused for quite some time, but I think we're at the uh, just at the tip of the pyramid, the tip of the iceberg. We have seen nothing yet. I think in the future, we're going to see social media on the mobile and on the video, of course, exploding. And that's why I think we have to look at what it really means, what social media actually is. Uh, and again, it's a little bit sort of a diffuse way of defining what it is. Wikipedia, which is where you go for something that you don't know, supposedly, uh, says social media as an interactive forms of media that allow users to interact with each other, is highly accessible and scalable, and enables user-made content. Now, that's a lot of stuff. The keywords here are interactive, interaction, publishing, user-made things. So social media is not, I figured it would be easier to say what it's not. Right? So it's not a mousetrap that you can set up to better catch your clients. It's not meeting strangers that you don't know existed. It's not about hyping or buying or putting up Band-Aids to a broken business. Right? It's really a reset. And I'm here to tell you today, it completely reset my business as a futurist, because all of a sudden, all these people are out there, and I become, in a, in a way, sort of more transparent, more reachable, which can be quite scary, quite scary in fact. So here's my definition as a Gertopedia. Digital communications based on two-way interaction, use of open platforms, self-publishing, and the sharing of content. The last part is the scary part. Do you really want people to share your content, your logo, right, your definition of what you do? That sounds very much like out of control. I think there's four keywords to social media. One is the keyword of following. That's not just Twitter. But imagine uh, the idea of following is a bit like a band. You have a fan, right? A fan that comes to you that likes what you do. Uh, people talk back at you. Every website has the talk back function now. Uploading stuff from your mobile, like many people are doing at this very moment. And the final keyword is now. I'm not interested in what Google said a year ago about your financial service advisors. I want to know what happened last week. And that is new. Right? They were finally interested more in the now than in the yesterday. And there comes the question, of course, for many of you, I'm sure, which I have asked myself, is this all about kids? Is it all about kids' stuff that have plenty of time to waste to look at these things? Look at this graph from eMarketer showing clearly it's not about kids. It's about people, the biggest growth right now between 30 and 64 is the biggest growth in social network sites on the internet. So once for all, I, I think we have to say it's not about kids. We have to think bigger. This is a, a mock-up of Finnair by a graphic designer in the year 2030. Let's think bigger. Right? I think ultimately, every single internet and smartphone user in the next 18 months will be at least on one or more social network. Whether they're 70 or 5, whether they're therapists or financial advisors or rock stars, they're going to join one or other social networks. Here's a really great graphic artist, uh, Hugh McLaw. He says, engage or die. I'm not entirely sure I put it in this sort of drastic way, but it's all about engagement. Right? I think this is a huge challenge for us to say, how do we engage? You know, how do people change? This guy here, you know what he's holding, right? It's the Wii controller. Right? How quick did that take off? Lots of people said people will never use a Wii on the couch. You know, who wants to be on the couch? But 
what I think is happening is that we have technology influencing human behavior, influencing culture, and then business. So if you look in this direction, I think you're seeing the changes that are coming up. This is the world that we lived in until about five years ago. Big companies, big broadcasters, big banks, big institutions, maybe even big government. You know, I come from Europe with lots of big government there. But now it's like this, right? All of a sudden, a huge challenge, radical consumer empowerment. And as users, we love this. We can go on TripAdvisor and just say, this is the worst place I ever stayed, right? That's empowerment. But as businesses, we hate this idea. Right? People, I mean, and people empowerment gives us a headache, right? Because all of a sudden they can complain and do things. I think we're facing the people formerly known as consumers, to use a, a Prince quote, right? Formerly known as consumers. These are different people. Connected users are very powerful. Look at what they do with uh, BP, Global PR. This is a fake BP account. 180,000 followers talking about the BP disasters. This app allows you to compare stuff when you're shopping. A mobile shopper guide that you can pull up and use in the store when you're in there. Here's a bit of a cartoon that has an important point. The guy says, her father says, newspapers are planning to put a paywall so we have to pay. And the kid says, what's a newspaper? And what this means is that we, if, if we want to be relevant in business, we need to be the same way than the customer. And what are the customers doing? You know, fish where the fish are, they are using social media, blogs, video. This is the music industry. Congratulations, right? This is the worst disconnect in the history of business, in my view. 65% decline in the music industry, not because we're all downloading for free, of course, that is a problem, right? But because there's a disconnect. They're not seeing the world in the same way as the customer. Right? So we can point to the customer and say it's their fault, but ultimately, you have to wonder about this. So going forward, here's a guy, if we go backward, Marshall McLuhan, the original futurist, 1971, said this. The uh, global village is a world in which you don't necessarily have harmony. You have extreme concern with everybody else's business and much involvement in everybody else's life. It's a sort of Ann Landers column writ large. And uh, it... Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean harmony, peace, and quiet. It doesn't necessarily mean harmony, peace, and quiet. This was 1971, before the internet. Right? We have to accept this. Social media does not mean harmony, and peace, and quiet. Right? It could be chaotic, it could be a risk. But do we have a choice? As Marshall Midloon says, he, or I would add she, you know, he's very much into he, but I would add she, wants an interface, a resonant dialogue. That's what you have to offer to your clients, an interface, a resonant dialogue. 39 years later, social media is everywhere. Brand awareness, social media ad spending on the mobile, it's right there with email. People use the mobile phone for social networking. It's a very, very powerful tool on a worldwide level. So here's the change. Back from the old days to where we used to yell at our customers, now it's no longer about talking down, it's about listening up. About listening to the conversation that they're doing, about finding out what they think about, it's about paying attention. Listening to your customer, what a new idea, right? I mean, this is not new, but it's better now. And that's really CRM. Social media is CRM. It's one of the things that it is. That's not the only thing, of course. But be warned, of course, social media disrupts closed systems. If you have a closed system, you don't communicate with your clients, or you have issues doing so, social media will blow that idea apart. I think ultimately openness is a survival strategy. This is not just in social media. Of course, that's business paradigm. Right? It's about connecting with others and creating an ecosystem. As you can see, the idea of earned media that some of you may know about, earning exposure and buzz, Right, can only be achieved if you trade control for reach. You can't have reach and total control. That's impossible. The deal is shift control to the users in order to gain reach. That's a tough mission. 
but it has to be done. I think this is the only way in the future that we're going to find people. Like you can see right here on Facebook, traffic is more than Google now in terms of reach. And if you, Twitter, if you search Twitter for financial advice, you get thousands of responses. Social is the new search. I mean, clearly, when we, when we talk about TNN, the Twitter news network, right? This is going to point into the future of social being that new search. Here's the thing that's sort of my bottom line for today's talk. We have to get used to user control. And we have to give the user more control so we can get more back. Right? The question is, how can you give up some control to be more in demand? That's the mission. That's something we have to learn. It doesn't just pop out. I mean, Google, of course, is the master of this. Right? Giving control to be more in demand, that's the Google paradigm in many ways. But think about this as a user. What would you rather have as a user? Would you rather work with a company like this or like this? Which approach sounds better? Are you attracted to magnetic brands, say, Harley Davidson? Maybe Southwest in some ways, maybe. Magnetic brands like Apple. People have a cult about Apple. Right? So which approach sounds better to you, the customer control or the magnet? I think it's quite clear you like magnetic brands. Here's a Chinese saying, very important. I do a lot of work in Asia. That's also a very good headline for today. The saying is, tell me I forget, show me I may remember, involve me, and I'll understand. That's really what you want. You want people to be involved. That's what it's all about. If you look at what's happening with BT, they have a Twitter account for customer care. What's happening with Fiat in Brazil, they allow people to co-create cars. What's happening at Zappos, great example. American Express has an open platform for business. And such and such, he said, what, 10 years ago, reason leads to conclusions, emotion leads to action. That's what it's all about. It's not about reason in the sense of you know, frontal lobe exercises, you know, who makes the best deal and so on. It's about emotion that leads to action. You've seen this before, maybe? It's a TV screen with a hole in it. You know what the most popular reason, the most common reason for these problems are is this. Right. You play the Wii, you lose control. Boom, 30% of all HD screens die to the Wii, or used to. Okay. Now, this is similar to social media. And I have to tell you, yes, there are risks. You can make a hole in the screen. Something can happen. But you can manage the risks and the unattended consequences by what we did, saying, yes, just strap on the thing to your risk. Okay? Problem solved. So you can manage the risk. It's entirely possible. You can also manage privacy. We'll talk about it in the conversation. Privacy is an action item. It's no longer a default. In other words, if you want to be private, you can be private, but you have to do something. Ten years ago, you were private by default because there was no place to find you. Right? So that's, that's not easy. I mean, that's, we have to think about that for a minute. You can be private, but you have to do something. Now, that's, I think it's quite a challenge. So I think we're going warp speed into a connected business culture. And if you're as old as I am, you would appreciate this video. Warp speed into a connected culture. As Forrester Research says, it's about the era of social commerce. Social commerce, it sounds like uh, pigs that fly. Right? But it's not. Right? It's a very good fit. I think we're going to see a future, for example, in the next uh, five years, social shopping websites, group buying, collaborative product development, all the stuff that sounds like science fiction is becoming real. So just to wrap up, here's a bunch of keywords. Interaction, conversation, publishing and sharing, user-made content, networked and open platforms, mobile and video, and last is return on engagement. Think about this, not return on involvement or investment, return on engagement, ROE. Take that home to your CFO, of course, he won't necessarily appreciate it. But it's not business as usual. It's just not. We have to get used to that idea and move forward by saying it's about engagement, not necessarily about ROI. It's about this. If you break the trust with your clients, you're finished. And you break the trust if you don't talk to them. 
If you don't show them that you want to actually reach them, you can break trust very easily. So get ready. Business is going social, like Best Buy is already doing with a, a thing called 12 Force. And that's our future. That's the elephant in the room. Business is going social. Thanks very much for listening. I have an iPhone app if you care to download it. Thanks very much.